Hi everyone, how are you doing? This is me, Miss Latika. And uh, hello everyone, myself, Miss Rekha. I'm Foundation Stage 2 class teacher. So today we are going to take you through the journey of storytelling in Foundation Stage. So the literacy webinar is all about we all are storytellers. So who doesn't like a good story? So we everyone, we all love telling and listening to the stories because it sparks and enriches the imagination, but it also very useful for language development. So we are going to tell you how the stories help our little children in foundation stage to develop their language skills, their communication skills, and also their creative thinking skills by retelling the story and listening to the stories and doing the actions and making their own stories. When it comes to storytelling, children are naturally gifted. They can take anything and everything around them and tell a story about it because this is one of the very useful tool in foundation stage because it helps the children to develop their language skills and also the love for learning in the classroom or at home. Why are stories important for young children? So I'm just going to take you through a journey by saying why are storytelling important for your young children. Um, you would have also you would have listened in the past that when we were young, when we go to sleep, we love to listen to a story or kids come across and just make up some stories and say, and we normally tend to say them that, oh, you are making up stories, but that's how they are going to develop their own imagination skills. So the basic and the most important thing is storytelling or by us saying a story for the kids, it develops the child's language and their literacy skills. So when we speak about the literacy skill, it includes reading, writing and comprehension, as well as the major part of enhancing and developing their language learning. Um, as you see, this kids in FS, uh, the age range is from two and a half until five years old. So when I say two and a half, they have just start to develop their language. Not necessarily that they begin speaking in English as most of the people tend to encourage and motivate to speak their own mother tongue and to understand what is happening in their own family setting. So when they come into us into the school for them, it's a completely new environment. It is a completely new setup and for some kids also the language is new. How do they get adjusted with it? So that's where the language comes as a major important role and it comes through the storytelling. Um, as I say, the second thing is like story is really important where they boost their own physical, emotional and personal social development skill. So when we say emotional social development skill, they, they bring out everything that is there in a story. So they think themselves as the princess. They sometimes feel, oh no, this is not a good character that is going on in the story. So the children normally tend to relate themselves to the story and to the pictures, whatever is happening. Um, when we tell the stories to the children, they try to build a relationship among themselves. So for example, um, if, they, if we are telling them a story about the princess and uh, about their pets, so they tend to have an imagination skill where they also need to have a pet at home and they try to enact. So that's how where they're developing the imagination skills. They're also developing their skills of communicating because they try to say that, oh, I want a pet. So they're learning to speak about all this stuff. Now we are going to see in early years when we say story, what are all the major skills that a child develops? So the first thing is receptive and expressive language. When we speak about expression is when the child is trying to express themselves by the story and they, they may speak either through words or even with actions. So some, some kids, they don't develop their language. So they try to enact or they try to express themselves through action. So that is one way also where the storytelling is going to help them. Second is sequencing skills. When we talk about sequencing skills, it's about once upon a time. So this is the beginning or oh, the end. It's the end of the story. So that's and then in the beginning, what is happening or 
in between what will happen. So these are all the things where the kids actually develop when we have a storytelling. Third one is thinking and problem solving skills. So in between the story, there are many times where teachers ask questions. So the basic and major skills is about asking questions. So for example, there is a setup where the uh, goat has to cross the river, but how is he going to cross? There is no bridge. He has to jump on the stones. So that's when we ask a question. Oh my goodness, the goat has to cross the river. How is the goat going to cross? And the child comes up with their thinking or the problem solving skills. Like the, we can use stones or we can put some blocks for the uh, goat to cross the river. Attention span and listening. Um, this is the major skill when the child is listening to a story, which even you can observe at home. So off late we have seen that they normally tend to get glued with the screen where the child is just looking at the screen and there is some actions demonstrating, but they do not have a book physically and the attention span when a child when we are reading a story to the child is quite less. So that actually increases the attention span as well. Creativity and imagination as already spoken earlier that this actually develops their skills, their imaginationary uh, thing like what will happen. They try to put themselves inside uh, phonological awareness and grammar. Uh, this basically comes more in FS2, so where they begin reading the alphabets, they begin read, blending, they begin making the CVC words, they begin writing the sentences. So when you are reading a story, the children start to differentiate between the words and the pictures and they develop an understanding like mm, this is the sound that we have learned or this is cat, this is a cat and we have learned in the school. That's how they relate with each other. So how do we introduce stories in early years? So every term we have a theme which we follow. So for example, in FS1, now they're following like how, what will be, become when they grow up. And in FS2, it's all about underwater. So when we introduce the theme, we show them the book and we talk about the features of the book and then focus on the pictures and then ask the questions like, what do you see? Who do you think is in the book? Where are they? So this helps the children to think like ahead, like what will happen in the story and what do you think? What do they think about the story, like where it is taking and who are the characters? So this will help them to un the children to understand and relate the characters from the story. And it, it also encourages them to communicate using the pictures and talking about the pictures like what, when and who questions and answering them. Now, how do we introduce stories in early years? This is Another uh, example, like we tell them that every story story has a beginning, middle and the end and there is a setting in the story and the characters and then there is also a problem at the end of the book. There is also a solution to this story. So we focus upon what comes next in the story. So they understand the structure of the story that, OK, this is the beginning, middle and at the end it could be happy or the sad end, but that's where the story ends and also understanding of pictures and prints. So whenever we read us introduce a new book to the children, we create we make our story cards so they know that they look at the picture and they said that, oh, OK, this is the middle of the story where something is happening or at the end this thing has happened in the story. So in FS1, we use the Pi Corbett structure. Um, I'm just going to introduce or take you through how we introduce the story in FS1. In FS1, we follow a Pi Corbett structure to introduce a story. It also has at the beginning, what do you see in it? So we focus upon characters and the story setting more and in story sequencing, but we do not focus on the illustration. I mean the words or on the words. We focus more on the pictures. Once the story is read, we draw a 
uh, we draw a story map for the children, as you can see on the screen where it helps the, uh, the children to go ahead and uh, read their own story or retell their own story. So if you can see the different pictures over here, um, uh, in this picture we are doing the story of whatever next. So we have already introduced the story to the children and then the children are joining in retelling the story, looking at the story map. So first it was the moon and then the baby bear wanted to go to the moon. Then what happens next? And this also uh, motivates them to develop their own languages because it's not necessary that all the children will be able to pick up the story, even if they are able to point out at the pictures and say as this is this is a bear or this is an owl looking at the characters. That's also is more than enough in FS1 as they are developing their languages through speaking uh, and if you can see the pictures that is down where a child is trying to read a story to another child. She is talking about what is going on, what they like and there is a picture where uh, we have a reading area where the kids can go take their books and read whatever they want. In this you can actually observe how the child is holding a book, how the child is turning, what he likes. Is he able to understand that the child uh, the book need not be hold, held upside down. It needs to be held straight. So these are all the major characters which you need to focus when you read a book to a child. Uh, how can you support storytelling in early years? So think about the child children's storytelling. So basically first we read out the stories to them and then start a discussion like we mentioned earlier. Then ask the children like what could happen next in different stages of the story and uh, stop in the middle of the book and uh, ask them to make a decision like if you were the character, what would happen in the story and uh, how would you like to change the ending of the story or how would you like to change the setting or do you want to choose the different characters in the story? So this will help them to make choices and then it, this will also enhance their self-esteem and then they can think differently and then they also get to know that anything could happen in the story and then that will help them to create their own stories. So it's basically about the questioning like what will happen next? What do you think could have been better? If you were the author, how would you change the stories? And would you want to change the characters in the story? And you can also support your children at home. So make a props. I'm sure like everybody will not have a props at home. So collect different objects from around the house and lay out on in the carpet or on the floor and then tell the children to use those props and make a story of their own and then um, basically modeling. First we have to model the children and bringing the vibrations like if it is a lion, so show how the lion roars and if it's a cat, how the cat mews. mews. That also helps the children to engage and think about different ways like they can bring up their own props and tell OK, this is a dog and make the dog story. So the dog said woof woof and then that's how they will be able to retell the story in their own way and then make up making up the stories. So questioning like we discussed before helps children to like, you know, get over and communicate very easily. So basically whatever happens in the story and, and end of the story, you can ask them. So what happened in the story? Who lives on the island? So what do you think the weather is like on the island? Which place you would like to visit? So that will help them to like, you know, in, introduce like to think differently, creative thinking, enhance their creative thinking health skills and then tell them to use their favorite toys and uh, retell the story. So that will help them to build their own story and then they could be like, you know, that will bring confidence in them to share the stories with their peers or anybody adults in the house. But it is always necessary that when the children are telling the stories, we listen to them because sometimes it, we might feel that, oh, this is nothing. But then for them, it's a great achievement because they are making up their own stories. And how can you support them? Uh, the another way to support them is extended learning. Let them play with the things regularly and then let them tell the stories, make their own stories and tell the stories. Sometimes we can also ask the children like, oh, OK, sun. So what do you think the sound? What sound does the sun begin with? What do you think the sounds are in that word? Tell them, can you write the sounds? This is especially for the children who have been already introduced to the sounds that is basically in FS2. So that will also help them to in, in enhance their writing skills 
and um, they will recollect and use wider range of vocabulary when re retelling the story. Now, in, in FS2, we also use talk for actions. Talk for actions are basically for the children to remember like what how the story goes on. So we introduce the story first and then we tell them the talk for actions like once upon a time, like opening the book once upon a time. So there was a prince and the princess. Then first, what happens in the story that is in the beginning? And then next, what happens in the story? And so there are actions for the uh, the beginning words that is the story starters like first, next, after that, therefore and finally and then the end. So this is how when this helps the children when especially when we are writing the stories. So we'll tell them. So what do you think is happening the first? Then they will remember. OK, the first that thing happened in the story and then next what happens and later on. So that will help them to retell as well as write the story. So when the children bring the library books like every now FS ones will start getting their library books from term two, but the FS two children have already been bringing the stories home. So when your children bring the library book home, so introduce the features of the cover which we have been already learning. So these are the features like what can you see in the front cover of the book? So there is a name, the title of the book. There is the name of the author, then ask them who is an author? And then there is a name of the illustrator. Who is the illustrator and what do you mean by the illustrator? And then talk to them about the characters, what they can see like this is a book over here. So what they can see in the front cover of the book, where do they think the setting of the story? Where is the story is happening? So that will remember remind them that there are when you look at the front cover, they know what happens in the story basically. And that is what we do when we introduce the stories to the children in the classroom. And at GFM now we have introduced a new new concept and it's called the helicopter stories. This is a complete child centered approach for the children basically in foundation stage which they are go when they go to year one. So this will help them to be an author by themselves. So this is most this uh, program is mostly about the children writing their own story and then acting the story that which helps uh, which helps the teachers to support if they need anything the needs in everyday needs like if they say only the prince. OK, so then we tell them OK, there was a prince and then princess. So they, when the children said their prince and princess, so we tell them to use an extended sentences like there was a prince and a princess and this is completely the child oriented like you can see one example. This is one of my class children written the story that the little girl went into the garden. The witch turned her into a princess. Princess was beautiful. She found her prince. Prince gave her a nice dress and they lived happily ever after. So this is completely the children writing their own stories and the teacher scribing it because we never use the words from them. But when we tell the children to use like the the tricky words in between to make a full sentence. We remind them to make a full sentence and tell them OK, what happens next? Then they go on with the story. So this is a complete child oriented story and uh, they act out at the end of the day. They tell that what is their favorite uh, character in the story? What could have been better and what they want to do it when if they are oh, in the story? So this helps for them to think and develop the language skills and uh, Using the sentences, full sentences regularly will help their comprehension uh, to make uh, to develop the comprehension. And sometimes the children, when they are writing a story, they say, "Oh, the story princess begins with per sound," and then they go and write, use the sounds to write the prince and the princesses. So thank you for joining us. I hope this session was useful. So storytelling is very important, especially in the foundation stage where we where the children are yet learning to use the full sentences to develop their language, to interact with the children and be confident when they are answering the question. So this is uh, the storytelling is one of the very ancient way of educating the children, but this is mostly important in F foundation stage two. So please support your children as much as you can. And if you need anything related, uh, any support related the literacy learning at home, you can always reach out to your class child's class teacher or alternatively you can send email to Miss Latika for FS1 and myself Miss Rekha for FS2 and we are all always happy to help. I hope this session was useful and thank you for joining us.
Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, make sure that you try to read a story with your child at the bedtime every day so that it will also incorporate them and they can enjoy their storytelling session rather than having a screen time at night before bed. And they can also come and share the stories that they read at home. Thank you so much for joining us and please feel free to contact us or your teachers. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely thank day. You.